हेलो एवरीवन तो यार कल तुम लोग का बोर्ड एग्जाम है एंड एआई का पेपर है इसलिए मैं लाया हूँ तुम्हारे लिए एक फास्ट रिवीजन वीडियो सो दैट इन केस इफ यू आर प्रिपेयर्ड देन यू कैन यूज दिस एज अ रिवीजन वीडियो इफ नॉट देन दिस वीडियो विल कवर वन सम ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन दैट हैव कम इन द प्रीवियस ईयर्स सो दैट यू आर वेल प्रिपेयर टू at least pass tomorrow's exam these are set of most important questions that have come in previous years as well okay to chalo without wasting any time let's just discuss all of them okay first question now i'm discussing paper of the year 2022 what is nlp okay mention any two common applications of nlp and name two currently popular but virtual assistants so let's solve all these three questions in one go all are one marks so what is natural language processing basically natural language processing is a branch of artificial intelligence that helps to carry out interaction between humans and the computer okay so natural language is basically language spoken by human beings and when we are able to make computers understand that process is called natural language processing okay so one line may you have to write for one marks definition you can just write this line okay and if you are asked what are the two components of natural language processing then there are two components one is natural language understanding nlu and second is natural language generation you may be asked examples of natural language processing which are things like email filters it is used to detect fraud emails spam and filter it out second is smart assistants so you were asked name two currently popular virtual assistants so any smart assistant like google assistant siri alexa all these are smart assistants that you can give an example of okay and these are applications or examples of natural language processing what if you are asked the applications of nlp which is the eighth question so for that you need to answer this okay. so there are in total around four applications of natural language processing one is automatic summarization you can summarize the text so like you have lot of ai models which are running in which you can feed an entire book and get a summary of that book so it is used for summarization of text then it is also used for sentiment analysis to understand from a text whether the mood is happy sad angry and for that purpose it is used this is called sentiment analysis okay then it comes text classification what is text classification basically if you want to divide like a news article in and find whether it belongs to technology sports or fashion which topic that part is called text classification then you have virtual assistants like google assistant cortana siri alexa these are also applications of our natural language processing so you can name these four if you are asked coming to the next question name the process of dividing whole corpus into sentences okay so basically if you are given an entire paragraph and you divide it into sentence what is that process called it is called sentence segmentation so under sentence segmentation the whole corpus is divided into sentence each sentence is taken as a different data so now the whole corpus gets reduced into sentences So this is the definition of sentence segmentation, which is the answer for this question. Next question, with reference to evaluation process of understanding the reliability of AI model, define the term true positive. So you need to understand the concepts of true positive, true negative, false positive, and false negative. What are these? Very important. In case, for example, in this picture, AI predicts that there is a fire. It says yes. and in reality also there is a fire so in this case the scenario is called true positive which is the answer to our question if the ai model is predicting yes to a certain scenario and 
in reality also it is yes then in that scenario the outcome is said to have been true positive okay so this is the definition if the prediction matches with the reality then it is said to be true positive and that is one marker answer that you can give from cbse point of view coming to the other three cases which is true negative true negative is when the prediction also says no and in reality also it is no for example in this picture is there fire there is no fire even ai detected no fire then it is correct it is true negative okay so just to remember how you remember what is true negative false negative it is based on the prediction if the prediction is correct and it's negative so it's no then it is true negative if the prediction is correct based on reality and it is saying yes then it is positive positive answer and since it is correct it is true positive okay so true positive true negative you understood just the opposite if it is saying if the prediction model is saying yes but actually in reality there is no fire in this picture then it is saying positive that is why based on the prediction it's saying positive but is it correct no so hence false positive this is how you can remember false positive okay this is not based on reality based on reality you have to say whether it is false or not whether it is false or true and whether it is positive or negative you have to say based on the prediction okay this is the easiest way to remember so it is a false positive case and the fourth case is when there is a fire but the model is saying there is no fire so in that case it will be whether is it a uh, part of reality yes uh, there is a fire but the model is saying no so it is basically false negative okay in this scenario the prediction model is saying that there is no fire so it is negative but is there a fire there is a fire right so this answer is false hence it is false negative okay so this is how you can remember based on this you will be asked problems of confusion matrix this is a sure shot problem that is possible that it might come in your paper tomorrow if it does then after your exam do comment in the section that it did so this i feel is a sure shot problem you must identify how a confusion matrix is made so if you want to know how a confusion matrix is made basically you have to plot a table टेबल क्वेश्चन में भी दिया रहेगा एंड वन पार्ट ऑफ इट विल बी प्रिडिक्शन वन पार्ट ऑफ इट विल बी रियलिटी सो इफ प्रिडिक्शन इज ट्रू सेम ट्रू एंड रियलिटी इज ऑल्सो ट्रू देन इट इज ट्रू पॉजिटिव प्रिडिक्शन इज सेम ट्रू बट इन रियलिटी इट्स नॉट देन इट इज फॉल्स पॉजिटिव ओके सो इसको बनाने का सिंपल तरीका अगर चाहिए तो यू ड्रॉ दिस टेबल ओके prediction yes no reality yes no okay if it is yes yes then it is definitely true okay and because you have to check with reality is it matching with the reality yes so it is true in even in the case of no is it matching with reality yes so it is true okay when it doesn't match with the reality then it is false simple this you can write true true false false now whether it is positive or negative if this is yes then you have to write positive positive if this is no then write negative negative simple so if the condition matches if prediction matches with reality write true if not if it doesn't match if it is a no yes or a yes no then you write false okay this is the easiest way to remember and second is that when it is when it is saying when the prediction is saying yes then it is a positive case and when the prediction is saying no it is a negative case with this you can draft your table practice writing this table it will help you understand what exactly it is 
then one question comes what is f1 score numericals on f1 score might come okay which we'll see later down in this video first let's answer this what is f1 score so basically you are supposed to remember all these four formulas whether it is accuracy pre precision uh, recall and your f1 score these formulas you are supposed to remember by heart okay so formulas as well as their definition this is a short short question it can come f1 score numerical and a numerical based on confusion matrix short short these two questions will come if numerical comes it will come for four marks if uh, normal definition comes it co comes usually for one marks okay so what is accuracy if you are asked accuracy it is defined by the percentage of correct of correct predictions out of the total number of predictions so basically all the correct when it says correct prediction means all the true cases whether it is true positive or true negative okay so that upon the entire set so basically in this if you see true positive plus true negative upon divided by sum of all these four into 100 that is the accuracy percentage okay remember this formula precision what is precision precision is basically when you see it is given by this formula true positive upon all predicted positives so the value of true positive upon true positive plus true negative false positive sorry all predicted positives okay so true positive upon true positive plus false positive is your precision so all the predicted positive values is your precision then what is recall recall is basically true positive upon true positive plus false negative true positive upon true positive plus false negative which is tp upon tp plus fn okay i am linking this entire document in the description so you can directly go through it and remember these formulas it's very important for tomorrow's exam f1 score which was asked f1 score is basically defined as the measure of the balance between precision and recall so you can remember the formula and describe it in your own words it is a measure of balance between precision and recall why it is given by the formula 2 multiplied by precision into recall upon precision plus recall so this is the formula for f1 score another important topic which usually comes for two marks you can be asked the differentiation between script bot and smart bot so what is script bot script bot is any chat bot which is based on pre written data so for example you have a script based on that script only if the chatbot is giving answers it is known as script bot whereas things like your google assistant siri alexa they are connected to internet they can not only answer information based on scripts but they can handle a variety of tasks such bots are called smart bots because they are using ai to tackle scenarios which they may not even be knowing about so that bots are called smart bots okay so what are the differences these are the differences between script bot and smart bot you can go through it script bots are basically easy to make because it is based on one script does not require a lot of training data whereas smart bots are flexible and powerful it is very powerful it can handle situations which it is not been trained for okay based 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 on use of ai and script bots work around a script which is programmed in them in them so based on a specific certain script only it will work smart bots smart bots on the other hand it works on bigger databases it requires a large amount of data to be trained okay then mostly they are script bots are free and easy to integrate to a messaging platform whereas smart bots are they require a lot of data so it is heavy in size and therefore difficult to integrate with platforms then 
script bots require no or almost little uh, language processing language processing is not very much required because it is answering based of a script whereas smart bots require coding and last is script bots have limited functionality whereas smart bots have wide functionality example of a script bot is something like uh, used for basically customer care when you use a bot for customer care based on certain questions that are pre-feeded faqs based on that if it is answering it is a script bot whereas smart bot is something like google assistant alexa cd etc okay so this you can remember next what is the purpose of evaluation stage of ai project cycle explain briefly so the formulas which we remembered accuracy precision recall f1 scores these are part of the evaluation stage of the ai project cycle what is that evaluation what is the purpose of that that stage so it is basically like you can see over here once a model has been trained it needs to go through a proper testing so that one can calculate efficiency and performance of the model hence the model is tested with the help of testing data and the efficiency of the model is calculated based on these four parameters okay so it is basically tested it is evaluated how accurate the model is performing and it is evaluated based on these four pa parameters so that you must remember then another question is what is tokenization and you can you are asked to count how many tokens are present in the following statement so answer is 16 how i will tell you what is tokenization tokenization basically if you are given a sentence like this which they have given you in the question then dividing it into characters okay dividing a sentence into different characters set of characters is called tokenization okay these characters are basically tokens like for example in this text we are dividing it into specific characters including comma full stop dash anything so all these things are separate tokens now how many tokens are there which they asked so it is one i find okay so count with me one two three four five six seven comma is eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and full stop is sixteen so sixteen is the answer if you are to write what is tokenization then you can write this definition in your own words okay under tokenization every word number and special character is considered separately and each of them is now a separate token okay next question kaira a beginner in the field of nlp is trying to understand the process of stemming okay so stemming is again an important topic from your syllabus in which you will be given some numerical like this this may not be sure short but it is a very important topic and has come in the previous years as well for two marks so you can see you are basically supposed to divide you will be given set of words you have to divide it into affixes and stem so what is that you can also be asked for one marks what is stemming okay so what is stemming in this step basically remaining words are divided into stem and affixes okay, explain it in your own words example in this case there are two words basically try and es is the suffix okay so you, you are adding this so try would be the stem and es would be affixes in this case learn is a word which is the stem it may not be meaningful but it is the word which to which we are adding the affix in let's see the example see this is the example for example healed you have ed which is adding to the word heal so heal is stem but this stem need not always be meaningful for example studies study is the stem it's not s t u d y which is the meaningful word you have to write it as it is so in this case our answer would be just write es over here under affixes and ing in this case under affixes try tri in stem 
and learn L E A R N over here, and you will get your answer. Okay, easy and most easy way of scoring two marks. This is going nowhere. Next question. So what is this? You will be asked with this picture. What do you understand? And explain it. Just two marks. So it's basically a part of normalization, which is a part of data processing used for converting text to a common case. What you can see over here is just the case is changing, but the word is same. Hello, 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 hello. So in this case, what you are doing is you are converting all such text wherein the word is same, but the case is case is changing into one common case, which is lower case. So that removes the recurring words and helps you find one word for that. So it is converting text to a common case. So after stop words removal, we convert the whole text into a similar case, preferably lower case. And this ensures the case sensitivity of the machine does not consider the same words as different just because they are different cases. Hence, all these words will be treated as hello. Same meaning. Okay. So that is what is point of data processing. Okay. Coming to next question. You might be given now this, this question is also very important and sure shot. Okay, this numeric, this kind of a numerical can come where you, wherein you are given a docu, uh, set of documents and you are supposed to solve the bag of words model. Okay, this question bag of words model is very important. How do we do this? Okay, so for this, basically you consider this example. We are supposed to, in any case, they'll ask you to apply all the four steps. So four steps are which one? Let's see with an example. These are the four steps. The document is there in the description. You can have a look. Okay. Let us see with this example and understand how this kind of a numerical is solved. Okay. Bag of four, bag of words numerical in NLP. This is how you solve it. When you are given a document like three documents like this, Aman and Alil are stressed. Aman went to therapist. First thing. First step, step one, just write this, collecting data and pre-processing it. Okay. Then write it as an array. Aman, comma, and comma, Anil, comma, R, comma, stress. Same thing separated with commas as, as if you are writing in an array. Okay. Write it for all three documents. So this will score you. Now remember, this kind of question comes for four marks. Okay. So each step has one marks. So to score full marks, what you have to do is write step one, collecting data and pre-processing it. Okay. Write this part. Aman, if you don't have time, you can skip the rest, but at least write this. Okay. Write the heading and write the sentence separated with comma like this in an array, in a box. Okay. Aman, comma, and comma, nil, comma, r, comma, stressed. Do this for all the sentence. Step two. Step two is create dictionary. So now what you have to do is write all the words, combine all the words without repeating. So for example, which all uh, words will be there in the dictionary? Aman, and, anil, are, stressed. Aman is repeating. So don't write it again. So went to a therapist. And like that, you have to write, see, Aman and Anil are stressed, went to, to a therapist, chatbot health download. So like this, you have to write the unique words once. Once you do that, step three is create document vector. These words you write on top, create a table, write these words on top. Okay. In the first sentence, what all words are there? So Aman and Anil are stressed. So for these values, you put one Aman and Anil are stressed. For the remaining words, you put zero and do this for all the three documents. So basically step four is repeat for all documents and you'll get this table. This table is your answer. Okay. Coming to next one. Next question is with reference from same topic. 
with reference to NLP, explain the following terms in detail with the help of suitable example. What is term frequency and what is inverse document frequency? Okay. So, term frequency, if you go by the textual definition, it is the frequency of a word in one document. The term frequency can easily be found from the document vector. Okay. So, term frequency is the table which we drew on top. Okay, in short, if you want to understand, in one document, how many times is someone appearing? So, in document one, it is appearing one time. So, term frequency for word Aman is one. So, this example you can give, the table which we drew on top is for term frequency. It can be easily found from the document vector table. Okay, as we mentioned in the frequency vocabulary in each document. Now, second is inverse document frequency. What is this? Now, inverse document frequency, in short, it is combination of all documents. How many words can you find? Okay, so in all three documents, Aman is repeating twice and is repeating once. Like this, when you found the array, then it is called inverse document frequency. So, if you want a simple tarika, the basic fact is you just add it. Okay, Aman, so 1 plus 1, 2. So, in that array, you will have 2. And it's just 1. This is anil is 2. R is 1. Like that, if you do, you will get your this table 2, 1, 2, 1, and so on. Definitions, just remember or explain it in your own words. Okay, and give this example. So once you do this, then inverse. So basically, inverse uh, document frequency is total number of documents upon these number. So to total uh, number of documents is three divided by two. This is your inverse document frequency. Okay, we have already discussed uh, what is term frequency this is the table for it you can give this example and inverse document frequency first you have to draw this and this is the final table for inverse document frequency okay next see here is the problem confusion matrix okay suppose you are given predicted value 50 okay this is the table predicted 1 is basically true and 0 is false. So, true, predicted is true, actual is true. So, this is 50. What is this? This is true, positive. Okay. Then, what is this? Predicted is 0, actual is 0. So, this is true, negative. Okay. So, both these are true. I told you how to write. And both these are false. This is false, negative. And this is false, positive. See, here is the false, positive, false, negative. True, positive, true, negative. Now you remember, just write the values that are given to you 50, 50, 0, 0. Okay. And what are you supposed to find? Calculate the F1 score. So, the F1 score, if you want to find, the formula is same which I told before. Just apply that formula. 2 multiplied by precision multiplied by recall. Whole divided by precision plus recall. Now we, for this we need to find precision and recall. So what is precision? Precision formula was true positive upon true positive plus false positive. Okay. So true positive is 50 upon true positive plus false positive. Precision is True positive upon true positive plus false positive. 50 upon 50 plus 50, which is 0 0.5, 1 by 2. Okay. Then uh, recall. What is recall? Recall is basically your true positive, this value, upon true positive plus false negative. So recall when you see, it is true positive upon true positive plus false negative. Okay. Precision is this upon this plus this. 
recall is this upon this plus this okay now this you remember so 50 upon 50 plus 0 which is 1 and finally put these values of precision and recall and you will get your f1 score which is around 0 0.66 i hope this revision was very helpful for you and do share it with your friends as it will be helpful for them as well and do well in tomorrow's exam thank you very much if you like the video you just saw please consider hitting the like button and letting us know also subscribe to our channel and share the video with your friends stay awesome and see you next time